No found grace in the eyes of the Lord. No found grace in the eyes of the Lord. No found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And he landed high and dry. The Lord looked down from his window in the sky, said, I created man, but I don't remember why. Nothing but fighting since creation day. I'll send a little water and I'll wash him all away. The Lord came down to look around the spell, and there was Mr. Noah behaving mighty well. And that is the reason the scriptures record Noah found grace in the eyes of Welcome the Lord. Welcome to Abolitionist Noah Radio. Today we have a commentary from Wavinya Wanyasa in Nairobi on the subject of abolition, on the subject of Kenyans and Africans resisting the neocolonial will, satanic will, that's being imposed or attempted to be imposed on Africans and on Kenyans, Christians, Muslims, against the values, traditional values of African families and tribes. Namely, through judicial fiat, through judicial dictate from the High Court of Kenya, Ruben Yakundi, at the end of March, dictated that no police should arrest anyone in Kenya for the crime of abortion, even though it is a felony, even though the Kenyan Constitution, Article 26, says life begins at conception, that the child in the womb is a person from conception and prohibits abortion. But on the basis of Roe versus Wade, which was later reversed a few months later, but on the false basis of Roe versus Wade and on other satanic bases that utterly and disrespectfully ignored the Constitution. If you read the ruling by Nyakundi, it's just, just a filthy cesspool of unspeakable, um, something you would be embarrassed to throw out the window into the gutter. I mean, it is. I am not exaggerating. Go look at it. Read it for yourself. It is filthy. It is vile. It is obviously written by the big international NGOs, the likes of uh, Marie Stopes, I can only guess who behind the scenes was pulling the strings. But what I know is that when the ruling came out, The Lancet, the formerly prestigious uh, number one medical journal on earth, who have disgraced themselves, exo-hippocratic, what do I mean by that? An organization that was formerly prestigious, medical organization, but now totally disregards the medical oath of Hippocrates that is 2,400 years old and has stepped outside of medical ethics by promoting abortion, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Lots of other unethical practices. So they were cheerleading this ruling just um, uh, almost before the ruling was published at the end of March. So that lets us know the agenda they have to depopulate Africa, to come like hyenas, to devour the resources of African people, and yet the African population is in the way. So without further ado, let me introduce Wavinya Wanyasa. From East Africa, Kenya, my name is Wavinya. Once again, hoping that you are all well. Mm. Today, I just want us to take inventory of ourselves, especially the pro-lifers, the pro-abolitionists, and I think it should be abolitionists. You can see the policies that are being loosed out. It's almost like diarrhea everywhere. The policies to destroy life in the womb. New Delhi, one of the recent ones. They've tried to push it down our throats right here in Malindi, uh, in Kenya. Through a Malindi court case, which, of course, was just um, by design. The arguments and the judgment did not represent in any way the article that protects life. And we will battle that. We will fight that. It's sad to see that we sometimes sit back and hide and not come out strongly to fight. You know, by allowing what we have complacently done, 
we will be judged and we will be judged harshly. I'm not just saying that for the sake of saying it. I'm saying it because it's a fact, because it's true, and because it's already happening. We recently got a new president. That's President Ruto. And we do know his financial backing uh, by one of the, well, it's alleged that Soros was behind his um, behind his uh, campaigns and let me say perhaps perhaps behind his win i don't know but we need to capitalize on the fact that he walked with the church whether that was a strategy to get um numbers i don't know but i do know that he owes the church much respect and so that means if you are a representative of the church this is the time to speak up for the unborn. This is the time to be very loud here in Kenya. We need to set a precedent, right? It was amazing how the church was able to push through, irrespective of the fact that they had different uh, members who stood for different po uh, 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 politicians and, and uh, you know political leaders in their parties. The church still, majority of them, pushed full throttle, believing that Honorable Ruto has been chosen by God. And so if this is the case, I'm calling out on the church, the same church that fasted for him, the same church that came out in throngs. They, they even fought each other. You know, there was even the existence of the blue and the yellow clergy. And I'm asking, why can't they come out with the same stamina, strength, vigor to fight for being born? Oh, but when we talk about that, oh, everybody goes back to their caves. <laughs> it's not a big issue. People just hide. I wish to see the church come out in full force as they did for Ruto. Otherwise, it would be the biggest mockery. If they were able to assemble themselves and even have meetings and come out and say, no, this is the person that God has chosen. Let's, let's rally behind him. If this are the same people who were able to go to state house, to have a meeting with the president. Now, this is the time that they need to go and present the plight of the weak, the plight of the unborn. This is that time. This is the time that they should go in there and call out for checks and balances on the NGOs that are here. We know what they're pushing, and I'm sure most of the churches do. So I'm calling out on the churches. I'm calling out on pastors to demand for meetings with the presidency of this nation. Just as you did, just as you rallied for him, just as you went to state house to pray, just as you stood as representatives for your church members, for believers. I'm also calling you into action. The church, the pro-life teams, yes, Pro-life teams were, were dining there. Yes, they were. So it means there's a window for our plight to be heard. Just as Martha Colme said, she believes we got where we are. I'm just paraphrasing. Because of God. She passed the judgment that the Ruta win was, just, was justified. And she mentioned God in it. So this is the time we're now calling out to all of you, especially the church, the pro-life teams that were able to sit down with the presidency, Danis and Dumbi, all those people. Make it easy for us now to win for life. Give us a win for life. Now make it loud and clear that we're not going to allow bloodshed in our land. Make it loud and clear. This is the time. This is the time, and we're looking forward to it. From East Africa, Project C, Kenya.
I'm loving it. Thank you. And now a word from Brother Charles Spingola, a preacher. And if you would like to hear more from Charles Spingola, I'll put a link in the description to an interview from a couple of weeks ago about Retaliation Movie that included an interview with Charles Spingola and also to his uh, documentary of the flag video where the sodomite flag in Columbus, Ohio at the state capitol grounds was uh, lowered uh, by a courageous act and uh, burned by Christians there in defiance of the iniquity and the tyranny of the sodomites. Now a word from Brother Chuck. So the scriptures tell us that God hates hands that shed innocent blood. Who is more innocent than the baby in the womb? And uh, what is murder if it's not tearing him apart in abortion? Uh, but the serpent being more subtle than any beast in the field, in the earth, beguiled the woman and said, How has God said? And uh, with many words, he beguiled her and she obeyed. Such is the case with abortion. Every human being knows that you should not kill innocent people. And so the serpent being subtle says, is it a person? After all, it's so small. And I say, uh, thus saith the Lord, yes, it is a person. And serpent, you shall go crawling on your belly. So we do not have to uh, understand anything more than the simple fact all men know it's wrong to kill innocent children. Whether you place them in the womb or out of the womb, it is evil. So where are these serpents that um, attempt to beguile with many words? The politicians, the Jews who run the media, all very subtle, but we shall not listen to them. And we shall do all we can to resist them and please God and keep his commandments. So that is the basis of, of what I see is taking place. The satanic influence to try to make us believe that children in the womb are indeed not children, that we need to find them to be persons in order to let them live when it's established they are people. Um, so to the devil, to hell with you. And who do we shoot? Who is the perpetrator of these beguiling words? I think that's the route. We should follow that back to Satan and his, his minions and fight it with, with all we have. Our salvation is at stake here. And um, they will attempt to beguile us. We will not be beguiled. For more information, visit projectc.com. That's project S -E -E .com. Stop exporting evil. The Lord said, Noah, there's going to be a flood. There's going to be some water. There's going to be some mud. So take off your hat, Noah. Take off your coat. Get Ham, Shem, and Japheth and build yourself a boat. Noah said, Lord, I don't believe I could. The Lord said, Noah, get some sturdy gopher wood. Never know what you can do till you try. Build it 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And he landed high and dry. Noah said, there she is, there she is, Lord. The Lord said, Noah, it's time to get aboard. Take a creature, a he and a she, and of course, Mrs. Noah and the whole family. Noah said, Lord, it's getting mighty dark. The Lord said, Noah, get these creatures in the ark. Noah said, Lord, it's beginning to pour. The Lord said, Noah, hurry up and shut the door. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The ark rose up on the bosom of the deep, and after 40 days, Mr. Noah took a peek. Said, we're not moving, Lord, where are we at? The Lord said, you're sitting right on Mount Ararat. Noah said, Lord, it's getting mighty dry. The Lord said, Noah, see my rainbow in the sky? Take all your creatures and people to earth. Don't be more trouble than you're worth. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and he landed 